Ding dong, the witch is dead. Oh my gosh, folks, what a week it has been in Australia. Let me tell you all, I had a completely different video planned for this week. And then all of a sudden on Tuesday, we get this crazy announcement that Victorian Premier Dan Andrews has resigned. Oh my gosh, folks. Now look, for any of you who are not in Australia or you don't, you haven't been watching what's been going on here, Dan Andrews has been the biggest issue of what's been going on here, at least in Victoria, in the state of Victoria, but it's affected the whole country for that matter. And so for him to actually resign, this, folks, this is such big news that why more stations aren't covering this right now, I have no idea. Now, folks, I gotta I got be honest with you. It actually pained me. This is how much that he, he is, I don't even know where to go with this at this point, but it pained me just to even print this photo out with the cost of the ink to put on this photo paper. No, I see, I wouldn't even pay, uh, print it as an eight by 10. I was, I looked for the, the smallest paper I could get and just even the amount of ink that goes on here, it's not worth it. It really is not worth it. If you guys haven't already seen, I did a video on uh, Stockholm Syndrome right here. This actually was a knee-jerk reaction to all the stuff, the strife and everything I saw going through down in Melbourne. And let me tell you, it was, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. What was even more amazing is I couldn't believe the majority of people who were actually going along with it. And I think this whole Stockholm Syndrome, this, this really explained what was going on and why they did, why the people went along with Dan Andrews and, and well, basically the lies that he was selling. Folks, Dan Andrews is the pretty much, and the, and the COVID lockdowns are exactly the reason why I had to leave my home of Melbourne, which I was in for 11 years. Everything, I mean, I, I really thought at one time this, yeah, you know, that's where I'm going to die. I will die in Melbourne. Well, folks, when COVID came around and all the lockdowns came around, I just, I, w I was on the verge of losing my business. That's really what it came down to. And I knew that, that something had to be done. If I, if I stayed where I was at that time, it, next thing you know, I'm going to be out on the street. And that's why uh, I ended up moving with my daughter. Sadly, a lot of people were not as fortunate as me to actually get out of it. But folks, here it is. He ended up announcing on Tuesday that, uh, you know, that he was resigning. And just, I just want to show you a scope. Any of you who, who are in Australia even, you really need to understand uh, just the scope of what the damage was that this single, this single man did for the whole country in general. I have, a, I have a list here. You got to hear some of this stuff just so it's in your mind and you understand exactly what he's done. Let's start with, in 2017, the state of Victoria became the first state in Australia to legalize euthanasia, if you can believe that. Uh, there was a bill that came through, I think it was 2021, Change and Suppression Bill. It was passed and it, it imposes massive criminal penalties on doctors, medical professionals, pastors, people of faith, and parents for things as mild as giving advice, praying, or conversations especially when it comes to gender-confused individuals. So it's illegal to even talk about this stuff to someone. Rainbow flags were raised on government buildings. In 2015, Victorian schools banned children from singing traditional Christmas carols that glorified God. So students were not able to sing any carols which welcomed the birth of Christ, including Silent Night, Away in the Manger, others, uh, doctors, and secondary school in secondary schools. Uh, 100 high schools are visited by GPs and students. They could now get health care without their parents' knowledge, meaning that issues like abortion, STIs, gender dysphoria. Look, doctors didn't have to even tell their parents. Um, some of the things that the Andrews government voted against, and this is probably more important. This is sick stuff that's going on here. Pay attention. He voted against providing pain relief to a fetus that can feel pain while being dismembered during an abortion. That's foul. That is just disgusting. Voted against rendering medical care to a child born alive as a result of a failed abortion. Voted against banning a partial birth abortion 
than uh, the practice of partially delivering a baby and then killing it. Uh, voted against requiring mandatory reporting of suspected child abuse vict victims at abortion clinics. Why would you not tell anybody that? Voted against requiring information to be provided about the health risks of abortion. Require uh, Voted against uh, notifying the custodial parent of a child who is seeking an abortion. And probably the most notorious thing that Dan Andrews did, he oversaw one of the world's most prolonged and most frequent COVID-19 lockdowns. Get this, there were six lockdowns totaling 262 days in total. Now granted, this is over a two year peer period. And I believe one of those lockdowns, it lasted like a hundred and some odd days consecutively. Can you imagine that? And let me put a little bit of the icing on the cake with all of this. Right now, Victoria has more debt. The state government has more debt than all the other states combined. Can you believe that? Again, that was all thanks to Dan Andrews. To add insult to injury and all, all of this, and th this is really it right here, folks. He now is getting a $300,000 a year pension for, I guess, the rest of his life and whatever that is. Folks, this is, this is atrocious. This is, this is, the fact that this sort of thing can even be allowed to go on, this is, this is such injustice in my opinion. It's, it's appalling. Let me also show you another thing that basically the news didn't even cover. This just happened yesterday, and let me tell you, I really wanted to be a part of this. A couple friends and me, we were talking about maybe even going to this. There was a celebration on the Parliament steps uh, in Melbourne, I'm going to show you some of the video here that came from a guy named Rukshan. Look at this, folks. Thousands of people are gathering in front of Parliament here celebrating Dan Andrews leaving office. When have you ever seen or even heard, for that matter, matter a government body removing himself and then there is a mass celebration such as this one? This celebration is justified. This, the people who are there, these are all the people who their lives were drastically affected by this one man. And really it did come down to this one man. And not only that too, it is also the Victorian police too who went right along with it. And I get it, I've done a piece on this before where I talked about the, the police officers, they felt they had no choice, obviously because they have bills. But the fact of the matter is this is trampling over uh, human rights. Well, let me tell you, I hope in the next few months that Dan doesn't just get away from this whole thing. He's not going to run away or he's going to try. Come to Queensland, Dan, because I'll guarantee I'll make sure that your house gets egged. I guarantee that. Folks, this, this is unbelievable what is happening in Australia here. And we all need to be pay, paying attention to any of the leaders who, you know, have, have Im, imposed these draconian measures during just this period in history that, that has just been unbelievable with lockdowns and, and just crazy, crazy measures because logic just seemed to get thrown right out the window. Now, what's interesting about all of this and all that's going on, and I thought about this early on, this actually reminds me of a section of the Bible, if you can believe that. And what I'm talking about is Revelation 11 and talking about the two witnesses. Here it goes, and I will appoint my two witnesses and they will both prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city. For three and a half days, some, here it is, this is what I'm thinking of. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse him burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets have tormented those who live on the earth. Folks, that's exactly what I think of with this whole Dan Andrews situation. 
uh, you know, and in parallel to Revelation 11 here. Now, granted, there's a lot of differences. I get that. But I think about, you know, the torment. This is really what it comes down to is the torment, uh, you know, that, that Dan inflicted on Victorians, for that matter, with the Ring of Steel and all that kind of stuff. And it, I, I'm telling you, even the people in Queensland and New South Wales, I'm telling you, you, you think you know what happened there? I'm telling you, you don't know what happened there. To go and live it through it, it was, it was probably one of the worst periods of my whole entire life. But it reminds me of this period here in Revelation 11. Imagine two people basically casting down, you know, turn, turning water into blood, speaking biblical truth that everybody absolutely rejects. And then all of a sudden, the beast finally comes in and kills these two people. There will be a celebration when that actually happens. But here's the thing about it is that when God comes and raises those two up, those people who celebrated, they're all going to get an amazing, uh, amazing and rude awakening of what the truth really is. Folks, that is going to be my word for today. A little bit of a strange one today. But uh, look, thank you so much for tuning in and, and looking at this. And I'm going to tell you, you golly, come to Australia. It really is a wonderful place to live. But uh, man, there are some crazy town things going on here, much like there is around the rest of the world for that matter. Anyway, uh, thank you again, folks, for, for all your support here. If you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it. If you think I'm worthy, just kind of click that button, click it for a like. And folks, I hope to see you all next time. Thank you.